So assuming you want to do a trial in the United States, what's the role of an IDE and how do you go about initiating that process? Well, anytime you're going to study a device in humans in the United States, before that device has been cleared or approved by the FDA, you must have an IDE. And this applies to all products that take the uh, PMA pathway as well as the increasing number of, of 510K devices as well that require clinical data. Importantly, there are two types of IDEs. There's a significant risk IDE and a non-significant risk IDE. The principal difference is that the significant risk devices must be approved by FDA and by an institutional review board at the hospital where the study will be conducted. Non-significant risk devices only require IRB approval. So as a consequence, some companies try to get a non-significant risk determination uh, because it's quicker and it, since they don't have to go through the FDA review process and therefore they can begin the study uh, in, in a uh, more uh, quick fashion. Uh, this can be, however, a very limiting strategy in some cases, especially for truly new devices since there's no FDA input on the study design or the study endpoints. And the last thing a company wants to do is conduct an expensive and time-consuming study and then find out once the study's completed that there are things that they uh, did not do that FDA expected them to do or data that they did not collect that FDA expected them to collect. And one example of this, while it doesn't involve a non-significant risk status, uh, is, is, is a good uh, illustrative tool as to um, why it's better to talk to FDA, and that concerns anastomosis devices. Uh, there were a number of companies that studied these products outside the United States, and therefore they did not need an IDE, and they did not talk to FDA about the conduct or the content of their studies. During the course of the studies uh, being conducted outside the United States, the uh, review division looking at anastomosis devices was changed from general surgery to cardiology, and cardiology had a very different view of what they wanted to be uh, looked at in a clinical trial. So when these companies came to FDA with their submissions, trials conducted outside the United States without FDA input, the cardiology division was unwilling to accept those studies and required the companies to start new studies. This is similar um, to what could occur if you do a non-significant risk study and don't talk to FDA first.